And I'm actually worried about our country, and I'm worried about if this is successful. Let's say he loses. And you're going, all right, this is, this is, this is how we play the game now. Welcome back to Under Oath. By the time you hear this show, we are going to find out what happened in Trump versus New York City. We're going to find out whether he's a criminal or he was freed. Now, I've tracked this case. Are we betting? You know what? I normally can get a feel of a case. Like, I knew Casey Anthony. I called Casey Anthony. I called all of the big ones, other than OJ. I called not guilty. Do you think 12 New York jurors can put down their feelings? I mean, this is this is a state that has not voted a voted for a Republican president since Times Reagan in 1984. Have changed. Did you see the Trump rally in the Bronx? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about 12 I'm potential you, people. I'm telling you. Well, they came. People. Th- this is different time and age. Trump's a different type of candidate. He's a different kind of politician. But, they, but yes, I do think New Yorkers. I mean, he is a New Yorker. They don't think he is. He's in New York. Yeah, they do. Did you see the the rally in the Bronx? You're, t- you're talking about, you're talking about four thousand people or something like that. Four thousand. How many? It was eighty thousand. Okay. How many New Yorkers are there? Six million. Well, did you expect eighty thousand Trump supporters in the Bronx? I'm talking about That's AOC's. Okay. I'm, stomping I'm, ground. I'm, t- I'm talking about. I'm talking about what's going to happen in this courtroom. These people have to come back, and tell their relatives, who are staunch. Democrats. Uh, I don't know about that. I think they, they, they don't have to say, hey, we support Trump. I, I think they can say, hey, the prosecution did not give us a case. That's what they can say. And there's two lawyers. You know, I think I heard uh, CNN or Fox report that two of the jurors are lawyers themselves. Can you imagine? Nobody let two lawyers on the jury. Okay. Well, then, then CNN or Fox is lying. And There's I don't know no for way. Sure. I didn't actually like read the transcript from you the jury You have the best selection. lawyers on the planet? Oh, for people don't know, here's the deal. Rule number one, never, ever allow an attorney to be a member of the jury. If you're a prosecutor and you're looking for a conviction, that's true. I think if you're a defense attorney, you want a lawyer on the jury to explain to the jury what reasonable doubt means. Here, here's, you can't push an attorney. That's the difference. As, there's, there's two on this, or, or so I'm told. I'm mean, as, as an attorney. I can verify it. As an attorney, one Maybe thing you're not going to be. Can verify that for us while we're talking. I know you're getting snowed. I know when I'm getting snowed. I know the job. When I say snowed, I mean trying to be convinced something that's not true. Now, the problem I have is this: if I'm sitting there and somebody's giving me something, and they're and they're selling not they're not selling the law. They're selling their interpretation of the law. And sometimes it's so bad, but they still have to sell it. And, I'm lo- and I've seen it happen where you and I have looked at each other and go, stop it. Just stop it. This isn't based on our personal beliefs. This is, we know you're lying to me. What are you doing? And that's why you never want an attorney on there because, God forbid, you have to push in a certain direction. That was our producer verifying, yes, two lawyers on the Trump jury. How egotistical do you have to believe that you can beat that rule? Is that what these guys are? Are these guys so politically motivated they don't care whether they win or lose in the in the prosecutor's office? Yeah, I I, I think that the 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 win was them bringing in the charge. That was the win for them. The, you the never actual, as a prosecutor do this. The actual conviction is immaterial. Now in the OJ case, the big deal was this: the the prosecutor's office believed they couldn't lose no matter where they brought this case. And that's why they lost the OJ case. Instead of bringing in Brentwood, they brought it into Los Angeles where, you know, he'd have a lot more sympathy. And they said, you can't lose this. Now, I don't know. I'm sitting here right now going, okay, this airs a week from now. And it does scare me a little bit. It It scares the hell out of me that we live in a country where you could lose your freedom based on your politics. And whether you're a Democrat or Republican, I mean, this happens in foreign countries where they go after... It's supposed to happen only in foreign countries. It's not supposed to happen here, and and it is. And, yeah, you're right. I mean, my sister's a lawyer. 
and she is telling me he he's a criminal. He's this. I'm going. Even lawyers are are going with their political feelings instead of going. Oh come on. I mean, I saw the. I'm sitting here right now, and I'm actually worried about our country, and I'm worried about if this is successful. Let's say he loses, and you're going, all right, this is, this, is, this is how we play the game now. This is what we do. What do we want to want elect? It doesn't matter. And we move, we move the bar. Like, remember this? Nixon. Nixon lied. Oh. Nixon lied to a president lied. And that was the bar. Presidents can't lie. He's a big liar. He's out. And then Clinton shows up. <laughs> and Clinton says the craziest lie I've ever heard in my life. And we bought it. There's a bunch of two guys. He's running for election. And two of his buddies in England go, this dude used to smoke dope with us all the time. Smoke marijuana all the time. <laughs> and Clinton looked over and goes, but I never inhaled. The craziest I never, thing. I never inhaled. The, no, but I mean, <laughs> we all knew at that moment, you are lying to me. But if that's what it takes, because we like you so much more than the other guy. It's almost like we said, please just lie to just us. Just lie to us. Lie to us so that we can vote for you. And now we're doing this now. Now we have prosecutors who are getting up there and doing that. The head lead prosecutor in this case just left the DOJ three months before getting this case. <laughs> okay, he was a big wig at the Department of Justice. This is a guy who that job is a beast to get uh, up there. I don't care you what... don't go. You don't go back to the the, the 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 DA's office from that job. You go to the next job. You go directly down. This is clearly the Biden administration doing whatever it can to prosecute its only rival. That's what's happening here, and everybody knows it. But no, I don't everybody think they knows do. it. But nobody wants to say it. On anywhere except for Fox. Well, hold on. Hold on. Listen, MSNBC, CNN, Fox, their first goal is ratings. And they pander to their constituents. Now, I try to read the articles from every every place. And, I, and, I, and this trial has been unbelievably upsetting because here's what happened in this trial. That any attorney, if saw this happen, would go, BS. What happened in this trial? A bunch of stuff. They let a bunch of stuff in. But here's where you know something's ungodly wrong. They say, all right, here's the deal. No cameras. I understand that. They don't have to have cameras in the courtroom. We don't want this to be a kangaroo court or anything else like that. Okay. Too late. The judge, <laughs> the judge goes, no, not as bad as if it was on film. The judge is upset with the witness for the defense. Okay. Doesn't like the way the guy's looking. He excuses the jury. Okay, we've seen that happen before. Juries get excused when stuff is right about to get way out of hand. But then the judge goes, and all the reporters have to go to. What? Why aren't the reporters allowed to see what you're about to do? It means you're right about to do something so wrong. You don't wrong, want anybody to see. That's, you that, don't that's want what... anybody to see. And I've never seen that happen. In any courtroom on the planet, I've seen, and, and this is when you know it's happening. In real, in real world, the judge goes like this. Uh, can we go back to my chambers? That's when you know some, let's just say, more private stuff is going to happen. And you've been back in chambers. <laughs> I've been back in chambers many times. And I've been going, okay, let's be honest about this. Let's, let's talk about this rationally. We don't want anybody else to hear this. That's what back to chambers means. But to excuse all the reporters right before you do something unbelievably inappropriate lets me know. Well, you, can't, you can't bring a witness back to chambers. You bring the attorneys Back to chambers. Right. So you can't bring a witness back to chambers. That would be No, no. I'm, t I'm talking about excusing this. When they excuse these press, the, the people well, in the press. Well, I'm just saying he had to run the media out because he couldn't go back to chambers. He had to address this witness, the witness that you said that he doesn't like. Now, we talk about judge shopping all the time. We talk about forum shopping, where you try to find a sympathetic court to your argument, whether it be guns, whether it be immigration, whether it be something else like that. I think we've gone beyond form shopping now. Now we're entering a completely new territory where we are going to 
come up with the most obscure crimes you could possibly put together and try to go after candidates or let's say friends of candidates. Because let's say you got a big donator. You want to go after? Um, of course, yeah. You want to you want to chill people from? You want to go? Let's say Soros. Who's a who's a big Democratic do donator? Donates a lot of money for candidates. I think Soros. Yeah. Sure. Imagine in a state state like Alabama, they go. We've got him on this weird crime. We're going to bring him in, in federal court. We're just going to beat him up. We're well, they just make it up. You you gave money to this organization. That organization funded these people who committed terrorist acts. So therefore, you are conspiring to commit these terrorist acts by by virtue of funding it through a shell company. Mr. Soros, you need to report to court in Alabama. Now Monday morning, nine a.m. Well, here, here's, the, I guess, the final conclusion on this is this. Have we blown past something we can't go back on? Can we turn this car around? Or, or is everything going to be fair game from this day forward? The answer to that question is going to be in the hands of 12 New York jurors.